One of the very first advances that are documented from humanity in the Torah, the beginning of the book of Genesis, is the advancement, the development of music, which is interesting because anthropologists say that music was one of the first things that human beings developed as a group in order to sort of gather the clan. What is music? Where does it come from? Why is it so important to us? And what are its spiritual effects? You know, music has the unique ability to express the full range of human emotions and experience. When you go to the department store, they know exactly what songs to put on to get you in the mood of shopping. When you're watching a horror flick, they know exactly what notes to put together that's going to keep you on the edge of your seat. In the elevator, there's always that perfect background music. Music is a part of every aspect of our life, and there's a bit of music, a composition of music that fits with every emotion that we can possibly experience. You know, music is very ironic. Music transcends race, transcends religion, culture, or era, yet at the same time, there's nothing that better defines a race, religion, culture, or era than music. Music is also heavily connected with our deep memories. I have first-hand experience working with dementia patients or Alzheimer's patients who can barely remember their name and then when they're sung a song from the synagogue, let's say, that they remember with that tune and that emotion that deep down is still a part of them, not only are they able to mouth the, the words along with the person guiding them, but sometimes they're able to make other connections. I remember one time singing a song from Friday night. We sang Shalom Aleichem, which we all sing around the Friday night table. And after this person who had dementia, after we finished singing it, she said, Good Shabbos. She made the association between this song and a Good Shabbos, meaning that deep down, that music touched a place that is beyond time and beyond all the limitations that can be put on a person. Rabbeinu Bachai and the Maral of Prague write about seven different wisdoms that act as gateways or doors to the, to the divine. Meaning that these are wisdoms that are uh, supplemental to Torah, that help a person understand Torah concepts better. For example, mathematics. Okay? It's a neutral subject, and if one understands math better, they'll be able to understand gematria is better, how words, uh, how words correspond with each other. If a person understands astronomy a little bit better, also a sort of neutral subject, one of the seven wisdoms, you'll be able to understand, after all, a Jew, one of our mitzvahs is calculating the months, calculating the moon, so got to know a bit of astronomy, and the more you know, the more you'll be able to fit that aspect of the mitzvahs and Torah. And one of the wisdoms that's mentioned in the seven is the wisdom of music. Now, we've learned in the past that everything in the natural order is based on the number seven. Whenever we think of the number seven, we think nature, the natural order of things. That's how it exists, number one, in time. There's seven days in a week. That's how it exists in place. There are seven consonants in the world. That's how it exists in light, in our vision. There's seven colors, seven prime like, of the rainbow, of the light spectrum. And even in sound, there are seven notes on the music scale. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti. And then already at the next octave. The Chassam Seifer has a, a, a work where he delves into the, the meaning of music, and he says how each one of the notes 
actually correspond and make a person feel a certain way, that each one is connected with a certain emotion that we have. Rabbi Sorol Madzitz discusses the connection between the seven notes on the uh, the seven notes between each octave and each emotion each emotion that we have and corresponds them also to the seven days of the week and how they're each connected with the seven emotional spherot, the kabbalistic ways in which Hashem expresses Himself and that we express ourselves to others. So each note, in a sense, has a corresponding emotional trait can touch us in a different way. Jewish tradition is replete with song and music. One of the very first advances that are documented from humanity in the Torah, the beginning of the book of Genesis, is the advancement, the development of music. Which is interesting because anthropologists say that music was one of the first things that human beings developed as a group in order to sort of gather the clan. So it's interesting that also in the beginning of the Torah, one of the first developments that human beings had was the development of music. King David, author of the Psalms, the sweet singer of Israel, among other things that he did in his life, he was a great musician. When King Saul did not kill the king of Amalek as he was, as he was instructed to do, God sent the prophet Shmuel to tell him that the kingship is going to be taken away from him. Shmuel then anointed David, King David, uh, in private. And it says that when that happened, the Spirit of God came upon David from then on. So the commentary is right. What does that mean that the Spirit of, the Spirit of God came upon him? That all the musical writings that he had from that point on were done with divine inspiration and prophecy. One of the things that we know about King David is that he never slept a whole night. He would wake up in the middle of the night. And you know how he would wake up? He had a harp, his David's harp, that was hanging over his bed. And every night, a north wind would come through the window, play the, the harp, play the strings of the harp. The sound would emerge, and he would wake up. And he would use that time first uh, to study, and then to compose music, to commune with God throughout the hours of the night. One of the things that's, that's interesting, the fact that it mentioned that what, what awoke him was a north wind. In Hebrew, the word north is tzafon. Tzafon means north. It also means hidden. Tzafon means hidden. Uh, for example, in the Haggadah, if you look in the Haggadah, um, one of the last things we do of the Seder is we eat the afikomen. And the afikomen is called the tzafon, because it's the thing that's hidden until the end. It's the hidden piece of the Seder. So tzafon also means hidden, meaning that this energy, which awoke him at night, music, comes and touches the hidden subconscious of our soul. It comes from a hidden place, a very deep and spiritual place. When King Shaul was overcome by an evil spirit, it was suggested that he had music play, be played for him. Many times when people are depressed, right, they turn on, they turn on the right music and the, it gets them out of their bad mood. It gets them fired up, pumped up. You don't want to hear what I listen to before I would come to this class. <laughs> gotta, get, gotta get psyched up. Huh? Elisha, the prophet Elisha, uh, when a musician played before him, it says that the hand of God came upon him and he was able to have prophecy. In fact, the mystics of all ages said that the music and the, and the joy that comes from music is a catalyst for prophecy. So music plays a very, very important role and rich place in our tradition.